Before I start, let me just remind you that Oda will be taking a break next week, so no review next week. Maybe a discussion, but honestly, I'm just surprised that Peckham survived. Like, yes, he got shot and thrown into the ocean. But what else lives in the ocean? Fishmen. So I like how Jimbei actually nonchalantly brought that up, giving us, the readers, the proof that Jimbei... You know, knows about Peckham's, and the Peckham's will survive. He's been taken in by the fishmen, or so we can at least assume. But it doesn't look like a pwn stopping with Peckham's, as he actually shot Bobbin. So Bobbin is actually down for the count after what we thought was a huge hype. <sighs> oh boy. Sorry about that. Yeah. And it was, like, we could have thought that Bobbin was so big from his de declaration that even devils can, uh, whatchamacallit, can join Big Mom's parties. That was so ominous, you could have thought something like him summoning Katakuri as a, as a fighter. Like him controlling him or some bullshit. Like, you could have thought... That one of the biggest fights would be coming. And Sanji needs a good win. So we would have thought. Even seven uh, Sawyer 7 Mage agreed with me on that. But uh, it seems that he just pulled a Hunter x Hunter on us. Like he pulled a Togashi on us. Like he hyped up something. Made it, us think that that was going to be it. And then used a previous plot thread to just nip it in the bud. Yes I know what I'm talking about. I fucking love Hunter X Hunter. I love those kind of plot twists. I love how Oda has been using plot devices. Not plot devices, but plot lines to just intersect and come to one big thing. Like, yeah, the Sun Pirates act were the reason that Peckham survives. Capone is the reason that... Bobbin does not reach Sanji, which allows Sanji and Luffy to have a moment. Like, there's no ex machina. It's just the plot lines diverging and... Not diverging. Intersecting and coming together. This is a very plot-driven, you know, chapter. Like, everything's starting to come together for that final part of the arc. Oh, <gasps> sorry, sorry. Just woke up. But, yeah... Everything is coming together, and Sanji has finally admitted what we all thought he was thinking. He wants to go home. And I am so happy that, you know, they're finally in, you know, good with each other. Oh, it did take Luffy punching Sanji in the face to get him to, you know, admit his true feelings. But it's pretty funny. It was pretty funny. So I can't wait when we come back from break to see Luffy and Sanji work together to take on the wedding. But we have to remember Capone. Yeah. Okay. Capone might not be the most threatening physically, but he is based off of a mob boss. He has the tactical genius to become one of the New World, you know, pirates that... Supernova! He's a fucking supernova! You can't count him out for anything. And anyone who looks like Al Capone, although a little bit fatter, shorter, a little bit gruffier, he should not be taken out of account. Like, he's gonna be something. No joke. I'm not sure if it'll work with Luffy or against. <laughs> Damn! Wow! I'm tired. But I really want to bring you guys this review as soon as possible because this is amazing. But let me also get into the Vin Smokes themselves. Like, we all know that they love women almost as much as Sanji does. It seems that they're just as disrespectful. And even though their love for women is almost as strong as Sanji's, they don't care about women at all, as we've seen in the past. So drinking all those girls under the table, mm, it's a little much. And and seeing Judge talk about pre-gaming. I'm a college student. 
I know what a pregame is. I know lit pregames when I see one. That's uh, not very lit. It's it's missing the the rap music of like Troy Ave and shit. Like no, it's just ridiculous because he's a grown man pregaming. Then again, I'm almost 23 and I'm still pregaming. <sighs> Either way, it was still pretty funny watching them not only drink all those girls under the table and not beat the shit out of them, but also bring up Nami, although they talked about her as an object in the end. It was hilarious, you know, seeing that... Oh, God! Oh, God! They really, really wanted Nami. Really sorry about my fucking yawning. Shit, I should have eaten, drank some hot chocolate. But yeah, they really want Nami. <laughs> like, she is my type. She, she'd probably be a better drinker. Like, how do they know that she'd be a better drinker? Obviously, she is. <laughs> As One Piece fans, we know she would drink them under the table. Maybe that's how the whole arc could end. Nami drinking the Vin Smokes to death. And then, well, then they don't come to the wedding because they're so drunk. But no, they're, they're, they still, they're, they're still coming to the wedding. They're still going to be in near-death danger. And if anyone noticed, there's actually a homie on their wall. I mean, that's some Thriller Park, that's some blah, 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 Thriller Bark vibes. <laughs> like, seriously, it's crazy. But, yeah, we got some Thriller Bark vibes and, you know, watching them from decorations on the wall. Except, unlike Thriller Bark, you know what she's capable of. <sighs> but, I guess not everyone can really think beyond their own goals. I mean, Judge is so... crazy. I mean, seriously. Does he really think that Big Mom will help him? Apparently he does. Apparently Big Mom thinks he thinks he, she will. And she's not wrong. Although, speaking of Big Mom, there's a little inconsistency. Like, wasn't the bag, you know, that's replacing Brooke in her arms not supposed to be in her arms? I thought it was left on the floor. Like, I was speculating that that would be like a big moment. When she wakes up, she would notice that, you know, it's on the floor. Something really did happen that previous night. No, no, that, 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 that's got nipped in the bud just as quick as Bobbin did. But, I'm really curious, what is Capone's plan? And now, like I said last week about story elements, what is going to happen that brings Caesar back into the fold? <sighs> oh boy. Seriously though, how is Caesar going to come back up in prevalence? We don't know. Like, maybe he could show up at the wedding... Maybe he could finish stuff after the wedding. Maybe someone will just randomly remember, Oh shit, we have to get Caesar! Or maybe Carol will be like, Uh, what about the cloud guy that we came, that we, that was also taken? Like, oh shit, Caesar. Of course, they could also give two shits, but it's just like how Sanji can't let his scumbag family die. Of course, I'm surprised he didn't put Reiju's name in there, specifically because that's how, that's what we love. We love Reiju. We don't care about the others, but we do care about how awesome of a person Sanji is and how much he wants to save his scumbag family, plus really hot, awesome daughter. Did I say hot? Well, you know she's hot. Like, drop it like it's hot, hot. Like, for shizzle my nizzle, girl. But no, all jokes aside, there is one other thing that I found absolutely great about this chapter, which is... When Sanji finally brings Luffy the food, it's just like we thought. Because of all the parallels last week to when Sanji used to bring terrible food to his mother when she was sick, we got the same exact end when it comes with the food he brought to Luffy. It was absolutely disgusting. It looked on the same exact level as the food he made as he was a child. Although it probably tasted a bit better. But the rain, the dog, it was it was <laughs> terrible. But Luffy still enjoyed it. Luffy is back to what I can assume is full strength. 
and now we can just pull shit together for the arc. Like, it's it's nice to have those little parallels. It really brings the character of Sanji full circle from the beginning of the arc. So now we just have to wonder how will the wedding itself play out? Because, like I said multiple times in this video, besides yawning, that we have multiple facets in this wedding. And by facets, I mean factions. First of all, the Vince Mokes will be no help because the only Vince Moke who knows anything is basically suicidal for all the crimes she's committed. And the others are too drunk, misogynistic, and fucked up scumbags. Where was I going with that? Oh yeah, they can't notice that they're being dangled like a fucking anglerfish getting ready to eat them. And Capone, who... Who knows what the fuck he's going to do. He's a complete wild card at this point. And the Sun Pirates, too. What are they going to do? Because as much as they want to join Jinbei in his at least quest to destroy, they do need to actually stay on Big Mom's good side. So what do you guys think about, now? you know, not next week's chapter, but what do you guys think about this chapter? And what do you guys think will happen as soon as we come back from the break? Will they dive right until the wedding? Will we get to see evil pudding in a wedding dress? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Because that's what matters. Nothing else matters. We got 105 subscribers, so let's keep that going. So join this community. And remember, tune in, because I'll probably have a discussion next week. I'll also do Attack on Titan. I did a Kame Got Kill and a bunch of other reviews. And gaming. So, I'll see you guys next time. Smalls out.